Hey, what's up, everybody? My name is Trophy at the Babbling Belgian, and welcome back to a bloody quick way through this only two. Where we're gonna go, well, rather quickly, it's not a speed run per se, but we're gonna go quickly through this only two while still getting all the main story beats and, uh, yeah, being as aggressive as we can while still being a little bit sneaky. So, we have this, uh, this guy, which is our first victim. Sadly, is this guy, yeah, he, he shouldn't be wandering off. There we go. I think I'm just gonna grab his corpse for a second and just throw it off the edge there. There we go. Easy peasy. I think there's two guards on the left. There's a side area we can go into to get into the institute proper. I saw something. Whatever I saw, it didn't. And slack. And we can just counter sneaky make this guy unconscious, but of course, we don't leave anybody behind, do we? There we go, he's dead. So weirdly enough, the best option to go through Adamire Institute is actually going through the front door, which is of course really, really weird. Because, well, if you go to the side area, you end up in the guards room, which is, yeah, not the place you want to be. Um, there's one guy on the left. Just gonna sneak around. Because he's not gonna notice, I think. Ah, he did notice. Does he know where I am? Yeah, he kind of knows where I am. Sneak around the bed and grab him in the air. Okay, that was interesting. And let's get this guy out of the way a bit because don't want to make a fuss. I kind of took his arm off apparently. So there's one more guard in the side room over there who is checking something out and slit this guy's throat. And in the background, we have a bit of a conversation that indicates that, yeah, this isn't the institute that you think it is. Supposed to be nice people, but apparently not. Um, yeah, if I had blink, I could just blink on top of the chandelier. But right now, I think we're going to have to do this differently. Can actually just go... Okay. I kind of pushed him into the, the wall of light. So yeah, we have another wall of light, which is actually turned off a ball from up there. But I don't know if I can actually easily go up there. Maybe through this, yeah, through this cabin. Yeah, we can go up and then over the pipes. Just go into stealth. And there's actually, we can actually see the next level a bit. But over here, we can take away its power source. There we go. I actually want to take that with me. Who knows, might be handy. Well, probably not handy if I explode myself with it. So yeah, we, we do get a save point with this thing in our hands. Um, you know what, I'm just quickly gonna check this side area. So just dropping down with it makes me explode, which is handy. Just wanted to use it as a weapon. You know what, might actually be able to use a wep this as a weapon, because sometimes there are actually enemies up here, even though there's like no real clear path up here that gives you a staircase or anything. There's a bit of loot here. Might want to check out, but apparently no one. So let's just drop the whale oil. Ooh, that oh, might be an explanation. Probably because I'm going through this game with a really aggressive mindset. I don't actually, yeah, it's a bit more gruesome, all the scenes, because the game actually changes depending on what you're doing so the amount of rats increases and the amount of blood fly activity increases that's not actually a lot of stuff in the safe but yeah so let's just go into the institute proper i think the lower floor is pretty fine we can check out the map really quickly not that i need it because i know the layout pretty much um so first thing first we need to go upstairs to dr hypatia's office to see if she can't help us out a bit Gonna just pass through those. So that's the dining hall, which contains a hell of a lot of guards. There we go. That was quickly enough. I think I can actually go... Hmm. Do I have anything fancy at the moment? I don't. But I might actually do this. Let's just get this guy down. Oh, there's another guy here. And through the face. That was a bit uh, 
too heavy probably. Does anybody get attacked by the blood flies? Oh yeah, they killed one. They killed one. But yeah, be a bit careful around the stairs because there's guards. Because uh, I didn't think... There's usually two guards playing on the next staircase. Are they still playing? They're not. So where the hell did they go? Or were there just the guys that I killed? I'm gonna use this to get rid of the next batch of guards. But all the way upstairs, we have Dr. Hypatia's office. When we get here... And there goes that guy. And there goes this guy. Thought the blast radius was going to be big enough to kill uh, the lead guard as well, but apparently it didn't. So, let's just go into the office, which s tells us that Dr. Alexandra Hapesha won't be working in her office today. She'll be in the recuperation auditorium instead, which is locked. She's not to be disturbed. If anything urgent comes up, I'll leave Dr. Hypatia's key in her office. We don't really need anything else because we're going to go with the aggressive route, which makes this mission kind of half as long as it's uh, originally supposed to be. I can get actually out of my solution, but that doesn't really matter because I don't have... Because that's kind of the mana bar refilling. But I can't really use that since, yeah, we don't really have magical powers in this playthrough. So there we go. Dr. Hypatia's key to the uh, recuperation room. Let's pick that up as well. And there's actually not that much in this room, if I recall correctly. Maybe some baiting salts, which gives us 15 coins, but that's... That's basically it. So let's go down into the recuperation room. Now this room over here is interesting because depending on whether you're actually aggressive or not, this lady isn't hanging here and there are no blood flies. So if you go with the pacifist route, this lady is just fine and happy and she doesn't commit suicide, but now she actually does. Uh, there's not actually something I really want in that room, so let's just keep going. The recuperation room, however, is seen better days, because, of course, this place is filled with blood flies. This is going to be tricky. And there goes the rats as well. I get more incendiary bolts to get me through this area as well, but I think I might be okay with just the bottles over here. Because this one... As over there, and that kills every one of those. And now I have another one just to get this bottle. I'm just gonna walk around because I mean. There we go, that blows that up. I'm just gonna go through this area quickly. Because yeah, that's been blown up. I can get the blood amber. Because, yeah, blood flies are not as big as a threat as you might think. Um, and then we are in recuperation already. And, of course, we're supposed to find Dr. Hypatia here. And, indeed, she's actually right down there doing something really, really gross. We could go and talk to her immediately, but if you wait a second, she actually starts talking about some weird things and i actually want to explore this area before we do anything else so in our office there's actually crossbow bolts which we'll be able to use another stun mine which gets us the maximum and a corrupt bone shard and it is zephyr that's exactly what i wanted because zephyr makes your speed uh faster while walking or running but you take more damage so we're just faster overall and now we get another painting for 200 coins for some reason, Dr. Hypatia hasn't started talking as she usually does, so... You know what? Let's have a little chat with her. Are you a patient of mine? I'm sorry. I... I should know that. I'm here to ask you about something. Do you cover your face because you were hurt? The afflictions we treat here are more common than anyone likes to admit. I'm not here for treatment. I'm looking for Anton Sokolov. Sokolov? Yes, he was here for a short time. But she took him away to see Kirin Jindosh. Do you... Do you hear something? What about the Crown Killer? A patient of yours? The Crown Killer? That name came from the newspapers. I'm afraid I don't... Oh, yes, the murders. I was in Dunwall, studying diseases found among whaling crews. Wait, did someone just call me? I've been forgetting things. The Crown Killer is an interesting case. I feel almost sure I could help with that. It's just, 
I used to do such good work, and now my memory is failing me. Who is that calling me? Excuse me. So, Dr. Hypatia is a bit off. She looks... Yeah, there's just something really, really wrong with her mentally. Even though we've heard more interesting things about her than that, because she's been helping people all around with the disease. But what she's doing here doesn't seem also savory. So, yeah, something really I've weird is going on. Uh, we can actually go talk to a patient of hers. We, we can get that from a few documents lying around here. But that patient is right over here. And he's kind of still alive. Hello, Vasco. Vasco doesn't look so good by the looks of it. Are you alright? <laughs> Dr. Hypatia did this. She's the crown killer. And there we go, little revelation. But she's not herself. She d developed a serum trying to help the miners. The first version caused horrible changes to her mind. <clears throat> it's too late for me. But maybe you can still save her. She's a good person. What can I do? In my safe. In disease treatment. You'll figure out how to make the counter serum help her. Um, the safe code is one. The safe codes. One. There we go. <laughs> and then suddenly we get a cabinet in the face. And Dr. Hypatia looks a bit different than she does. Vasco tries to escape. So yeah, the big twist here is that Dr. Hypatia herself is the crown killer. Um, and there's actually two ways we can handle this. We either can kill Dr. Hypatia immediately, since she is the crown killer and that's exactly what we're here to do. Uh, or we can go find the cure in Vasco's, uh, well... Safe. That's an algae that produces my serum in the water tanks of the city, in the rivers themselves. So yeah, she's a bit crazy. I just want to take uh, a second to explain everything, Dr. Hypatia. Give me a second. So yeah, she tried to make a serum to cure the miners who were suffering from some sort of dust-related disease. And she took it herself, which changed her mind completely, which prompted Duca, Duke Luca Abele to use her as an impromptu assassin, because she has a... Yeah, it's not just changes to her mind, she's actually become she's a very, very fancy assassin. So, to get higher, I think I'm gonna go over here, because that gets us up above, because I think she's already on the upper floor at the moment. Because, uh, of course, I'm going to kill her immediately, which is what makes this mission so quick then. So, can I get higher without actually triggering her? Because I think she's walking around back and forth. Can get on the railing. And then up here. There we go. So, from here, yeah, there she is. I think I should be able... To just get her from behind. She stops there. Okay, so there's a crossbeam over here. Now it depends on which direction she takes. Because I don't think she exits the area for now. So I'm just going to wait until she turns around. There we go. Goodbye, Dr. Hypatia. I'm so sorry. This is actually the first That's time I killed her like that. Yeah, so it's it's a bit bit gruesome because she's actually a good person if you cure her and all, and she even gets on the boat. But yeah, um, we we killed Dr. Hypatia. Now that we know where um, she took us, it was she who uh, abducted Sokolov. We know where she took Sokolov because uh, she told us to that she took him to Kirin Jindosh, which is going to be our next target. And we can actually open up the shutters and just <sighs> drop down here there's a few guys once that watchtower is down megan can pick me up i think i'm gonna use a crossbow because we've been gathering a few materials over here so just straight in the face someone tried to there we go and i think did wait did that second guard just fall off because he was surprised that was interesting because he's just gone so we can we should actually take out the watchtower oh god 
I missed the watchtower. But hey, um, goodbye. Because I need to actually take out the watchtower. Yeah, I should have sprinted. There we go. That's the whale oil canister. Is there another guard? Who knows? Goodbye. I love how the explosion is completely delayed. And that concludes our objectives. So there we go. There's Megan We're with finished. the boat. The Grand Guard could come at any time. Well, they're all dead, I'm afraid. There's a lot of dead guys in this place. I don't know who calls that. Might have been me. Uh, don't start pointing any fingers, but uh, let's go. Can we leave this place yet? I don't like it. Ready now? Well, you're right to not like it because it's terrible in there. Now there's a lot of corpses in there as well. But let's go to the dreadful way. Let's get way. back to the ship. I actually went through the Institute faster than the area before the Institute, which is interesting. But I killed Hypatia. You what? She was the crown killer. The Duke tricked her into injecting herself with a flawed version of her serum. It changed her. She wasn't even aware of it. Crazy. What about Anton? I gave him to a man named Kieran Jindosh. Do you know who that is? Everybody knows him. The grand inventor of Sir Konos. And he's next. He's next on our kill list, with, or for which is uh, probably the longest chapter of the game. Uh, it's also the, one of the coolest chapters in the game. But there we go. 14 hostiles killed, 14... Only 4 detected bodies and 5 normal detections. So that's... Pretty much on the stealthy side. Yeah, only one painting, one blueprint, and one bone charm, and a little bit of coins, but yeah, we're not here for the completionist playthrough, are we? In his day, Sokolov was Dunwall's genius. His inventions transformed the city. I watched from the tower as they changed the capital into a prison, and listened as he drank and laughed, telling my mother time and again how brilliant he was. After her death, Sokolov's inventions helped a tyrant take control of the Empire. Now, all these years later, Kieran Jindosh is Karnaka's genius. The mad inventor who's given the Duke sinister machines that move like people but aren't. Clockwork soldiers that fight and kill. I've got to find out where Sokolov's being held and bring the old man back alive. Rescue one genius and kill the other before he creates an army of clockwork soldiers. So again, she goes for the word kill here instead of take out. And we need to go to that clockwork mansion. And which is probably going to be the longest episode of the series because the clockwork mansion is the longest chapter in the game because it's a chapter that both has a pre, uh, well, examination area, so we need to do a few things before we actually get to the mansion. Similar as we did to the station, but it's not a separate chapter. So, uh... Dishonest. Everybody's got secrets, I guess. So yeah, Megan is uh, hinting at most. something she's keeping from us, but... Uh, yeah, it's gonna be the longest episode yet, but uh, I'm gonna take a little break. Maybe uh, talk to Megan Foster really quickly. Indeed. But uh, you know what? I'm gonna talk to her in the next episode, so it's gonna be a bit more cohesive for chapter 4. So thank you guys enormously for watching. If you enjoyed the episode of this murderous rampage through Dishonored 2, don't forget to like it right here on YouTube. And when we get back, we'll go and kill ourselves a mad inventor. So see you guys in the next episode of A Bloody Quick Way Through Dishonored 2. Goodbye.